by the purple go here. Oh, it's time to clean out this strawberry bed. I live in uh, Saskatchewan, Canada. Um, I'm in uh, hardiness zone three, which means that we get down to maybe 35, I think it is, in the winter. Uh, so a lot of common wisdom will tell you that you should mulch your strawberries heavily, cover them up, do all sorts of things to protect them for the winter. But I don't. I just let them die back naturally, make sure they're watered in well before winter, and then they just go through the winter and this is what they look like after. So I've had some people ask me if I can show you what I do to uh, clean them up and get them ready to get going again in the spring. And it's definitely time because there's lots of fresh growth here, so I'm going to get into it. So to do this job, I'm going to have my gardening gloves just to keep my hands clean and keep them from getting poked or anything while I'm digging in here. And then I have just a little pair of secateurs in case I need to trim anything off. I probably will. Uh, a little hand rake. Sometimes I find it easy to kind of loosen up. If the leaves in that have really gotten matted down in here, then I'll use this to kind of loosen things up. But I'll need some sort of little bucket just to, just to put all the debris in though. And then I have a big bucket here of compost. Uh, because a lot of times the crowns lift over the winter and I will just top dress around them just to keep them down about where they need to be. With strawberries, you need to remember the crowns don't want to be buried in, in the soil. They actually want to be at or just slightly above soil level. But sometimes they get really high from uh, the frost heaving because our ground freezes here and then it'll thaw, freeze, thaw, and that can kind of push roots up out of the ground. So that's just all this is for. Uh, if I need to make a heavier top dress with it, I will. Otherwise, I'll just lightly kind of top dress around the plants once it's all cleaned up, just to give them that little bit of feed. And that's really all I feed my strawberries through the season. I don't come back and regularly feed them with any sort of fertilizer. So it's going to look like a little bit of a daunting task to me. Uh, it always just looks a little bit messy. And I have my compost bin right here. So in the winter, sometimes the compost just kind of gets tossed at the bin, depending on who's doing it. So sometimes I find odd little treats in here. Sometimes the birds and the rodents have hung out in here over the, the winter a little bit and they've made a mess. So just have to get in it and, and get it cleaned up. So really all I do is either with the rake or my hand, I just first kind of go around and just gently loosen things up so I can see what I'm working with. I'm going to unearth a plant or two, so see what you can see here, right about here. Right in this area here, hopefully you can see there's some new growth coming up, so that's why I'm just gently doing that. I don't want to get in there and really just smash around with the rake or my hands and just really claw things up. So I actually have a couple of plants growing really close together here. So then I'm my snips that I buried. And there's going to be lots of stems and runners that are old and dried out. I'm just going to snip those off. They'll go in my bucket and just clean those up, watching for any fresh growth. Just take the old brown stuff off. And I just go through the whole bed doing that to start. So just cleaning it up in general. So hopefully you can have a better look here at what I was looking at. So, And then just any of these brown stems. Off. Here's another plant right here. Again, just gathered up the dry stems, just pulled those off, get them out of the way. So you probably could get away with just leaving the, the leafy debris here, but it can harbor uh, pests and disease and I just like to kind of clean it up. So here's a runner here that started to grow out last year, but it looks like it never got fully rooted out. So it's quite dried up around this root area. So when I get to where it's attached, I'll just cut this right off and it'll just go in the compost. It's not worth saving. If it was uh, rooted down, then it would have grown into a new plant for me. Lots of leaves here that aren't part of the strawberries and they're just blown in from the trees and that. I like to leave my yard with quite a bit of leaf litter on it in the fall. 
helps protect all the plants. But like I said, I don't come in and actually put anything over my strawberry bed and actually work to mulch it and help the plants. You can see how well these plants have survived over the winter and they've greened up and are coming back to life now this spring already. I think you can see these here. So I can very gently just pull some of this brown stuff off. If it has any resistance to being tugged at all, then I'll go in with my snips so I don't pull the plant out because I find you can easily raise the plant out of the ground. So I'll just go through and keep cleaning out this bed. Can you see this plant here? It's completely buried under the leaves now, so you see how much more yellow the leaves look than those that have been out and above getting the light. So now that they're unearthed, they'll get a lot more sunshine and they will grow into some nice, nice, a nice plant there. So that looks much better now. Looks like the plants can breathe again. They're all unearthed. There was plants, like I said, that were covered up. They weren't getting the sun. So now they'll get the sun shining on them to grow. So you can see here, I have a couple of spots where I had some honey oys planted. There's one here and there's another one right over there. And uh, I had just popped those in last year and it looks like they've all come back. The rest are just uh, basic ever-bearing strawberries. Lots of times they don't even have a name on them that I'll just find at like the hardware store or garden center or wherever I happen to be if I feel like I want a few more strawberries. But I don't often add a lot of strawberries in the store. Just once in a while I have a weak moment. But I wanted to show you quick how they propagate and what you can do you can see there's some bare patches now that patch technically is fine I think they say 9 to 12 inch spacing for strawberries but I usually have mine a little closer and they still produce well so I like to get as many plants as I can in this little I don't know three by five foot space that I have here out a big long runner I think you can see that there and this one Looks like it was out and maybe had rooted down into the leaves and debris in the fall. It has a, a good root system on it and it does have a nice crown that looks like it's uh, starting to grow there. So I'm just going to snip this so you can have a better look at it. So there it is. So that's the roots sticking up there. And over here is the crown. I think you can see there's some fresh growth coming there from the crown. So normally you would just take one of these and move it out where you want a new plant, leaving it attached to the parent plant. And 
the, they usually don't have all these roots on them. Usually it would just be this little runner with maybe a few little tiny roots coming at the bottom. And then you would just pin it down to the soil somewhere and let it grow. So this one is obviously put on good roots. It has some growth going and I think I took away its point where it was going to uh, be rooted in when I dug around the leaves. So I have a spot just kind of below where I'm holding it down here where there's actually a, a dead plant at the edge here. So I'm just going to see if I just get at it with my snips. It might not even be totally dead. It looks like there might actually be some green on it. Oh. No, those roots don't look the greatest, so take that out. The roots are pretty brittle. It doesn't feel great. Whereas these are nice and pliable. They still seem fairly fresh. And like I said, there's some growth coming. So I think this will grow. And I'm just going to put it down here. I just, I just want where the roots and the, the plants start to meet. That's going to be the soil level. I don't want to bury it up deeper. Strawberries don't like to be buried very deep. So just set it there. Put it down. I know you probably couldn't see that very well because I have this post here to hold up netting later on in the season. So there it is right there. So you can see how the, hopefully you can see that, how the head of the plant is up out of the ground. It's just the roots that are in the ground there. And there's lots of little babies that have come off of runners and just rooted themselves in. I haven't put them here. Let's see, I could have trimmed some more up there. Let's see these, how they have rooted against the side and they've just put themselves there. And at one point they would have had a long kind of stem that would have gone over to a parent plant. And that's where they would have gotten their, their uh, energy until they got their roots down in the soil and were able to grow well. So if you had empty spaces that you wanted to fill in, you could dig up a plant like this from a space. Lots of times they kind of start to crowd the plants and then you could move them to wherever you wanted and just bury them. See how they're growing, just all the leaves, the crown of the plant are above the ground and the roots are the only thing below the ground on these. So now, I don't think it's probably obvious to the camera here, but there's some low spots. So I will come and fill some of those in, but I'll be careful to keep, again, the crowns above. I don't see any major heaving of the plants, so I won't be bringing any compost up right around the plants. But there is some low spots in the soil that I'll bring up in areas just to bring that up, and I'll use the compost for that. And before I bury it, I should show you, I have some drip line. Now this is just the weeping drip line. Let's see if I can get one lifted. So here it is here. So this just has like tiny, tiny little holes everywhere in it. And uh, it'll just kind of weep all over this bed and just keep it damp. So this just gets turned on. It's connected in with my regular garden sprinklers. So it just comes on when this garden comes on. If I find it getting too damp in here because this bed isn't raised as much as the rest of my garden beds, then I just have a little uh, kind of thumb stop thing on the hose uh, and I can just turn it off and just turn the water off to the strawberries. So, because you don't, you want them to be, I find kind of damp soil, but not wet. So sometimes I find it just gets a bit too wet because they're in slightly different conditions here than my regular garden beds. But otherwise they're just getting that regular watering for that. So we'll just take this, just fill in some of these kind of lower spots, being careful not to get any crowns of the plants buried. This will settle down a little bit because it is kind of a rough compost. So like I said, since there's no major heaving of any of the plants here, I don't want to be getting real deep around the crowns of the plants. They want to be sticking up, so I'll just do a real light covering of compost just to add some nutrition back into the soil because these produce very heavily throughout the year. And that's all they're going to get, so... Using compost is just a good way to kind of conserve moisture in the soil too. 
you could use a mulch if you wanted. But I find that the compost works quite well. Okay, my strawberry bed is all cleaned up and mulched with the compost and ready to go for and a whole other season of producing for me. Can't wait to start harvesting bowls full of strawberries and enjoying that uh, delicious taste of summer. And you can see hopefully behind there's some green coming up there. That's my rhubarb. So you know a little strawberry rhubarb pie is in my future here. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.